I'm not eating that. I'm not eating that. Welcome to Your Food Looks Funny. I am your host, Marcus T. And for those of you who haven't listened to the show before, again, we're here to help people out with their cooking habits, with their picky eating habits as well. That's kind of where the name came from. My wife is a very picky eater, and I used to be one myself. Now I am a chef. If you aren't following the show on Instagram or Facebook, check us out at YFLF Podcast. That's YFLF, as in Your Food Looks Funny, podcast on there. We also have a group on Facebook that has some funny conversations about some funny looking food and some funny looking eating habits along with that. But today's subject we're getting into is five tips on how to save you time, energy, and money when it comes to cooking your own food. So five tips for that. So you want to make sure that you're around to hear all five because they are beneficial. And I know those who hear this and they just think they don't have time for cooking. Trust me, you have time. But if you want to benefit from it, I can tell you how. All right, so without wasting any delays here, we're going to get right into it. So the number one tip. Now, these aren't in any particular order. I just kind of did them chronologically to, you know, think about the process that you should go through when these tips should be implemented. So number one, saving money and time. Okay, when it comes to cooking your own food, number one, not shopping while you're hungry. So for those of you who do your own grocery shopping, you go to the store while hungry. I have a little study for you. Okay. I love breaking out the science, 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 science. So in this study, researchers asked 68 people to come to their lab to avoid eating for five hours before they came as well. Okay. Upon arrival, half of the participants were told that they could eat as many wheat crackers as they wanted, while the other half were not given any food at all. Okay, both groups of participants were then asked to grocery shop in an online store that offered high calorie foods such as candy, salty snacks, red meat, as well as low calorie foods such as fruit, vegetables and chicken breasts. Okay. Participants who were hungry purchased more high calorie products. On average, hungry people purchased 5.7 high calorie products, while the group that ate before shopping bought 3.9 high calorie products. So shopping while hungry, you're trying to make up for what you didn't eat earlier or what you didn't have before or trying to fill a void that is wide open because you didn't come in with the right mindset, the right feeling. Your stomach is now doing the thinking for you and you're going in buying stuff that isn't necessarily healthy for you or just impulse buys because, oh, it looks good because everything looks good. You're hungry. We're hardwired to look for food while we're hungry. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious. Wouldn't that make sense? Come on. If you're hungry, you're looking for any kind of food, which then stacks the appeal of any food you now look at. So something that you might ignore if you've already eaten or you're not completely desperate for a meal may not necessarily look as, you know, appealing if, if you're, if you're starving. But that's my number one tip is don't shop while you're hungry. I have this issue a lot of times because I love grocery shopping and I'll spend a couple of hours in a grocery store. The only problem is if I go while hungry, then my shopping trip is immediately thrown off because I spend more time than I should have. Because now every aisle that I comb has something attractive in it, something that I feel like I can use to cook and For those who don't need to be in a store, who have kids, who have other obligations, job things that they need to tend to, being in the store for two hours is not realistic for everybody. It's not realistic. Sometimes it pertains to my job, so I can actually just be in there. But as far as a normal person who works a job that's not food related, that's not grocery store related, you don't have that much time to spend in a store. And you probably don't have that much time to listen to me talking about being in the store that long. But If you go shopping after you've had breakfast, after you've had lunch, after you've had dinner, I know a lot of people are trying to settle in to their day 
and not be doing much else after they eat, you want to get up and move anyway. Okay, it's it's helping you with the exercise. If you can get up, walk, do something, you're just walking the aisles of a grocery store, you're walking off the food that you just had, and you've already eaten, so now you're not as inclined to buy those high-calorie snacks, candies, impulse buys that you wouldn't necessarily buy in the first place. So not shopping while hungry is tip one. I'm not going to linger too long on it. You kind of get the gist of where I was going with it. Number two, going along with shopping is buying what you know you will eat. And I have a huge issue with this for myself because I love to experiment. I love to try new things. The only problem is when I spend an entire shopping trip buying stuff that are experiments, I end up with a cart full of stuff that I wasn't going to eat anyway. And then when I get back to the house, reality sets in. Then I'm like, what is all this stuff? What am I going to do with this? I bought this one ingredient to try with this dish. I try, I I buy this one new meat or one new vegetable that I want to try with something else, but I don't have anything else to complete it. I don't have a full dish to complete here. Maybe you thought it was going to taste good when you looked at it in your head. But if, if you're not ready to eat it then and there right after you get back from the shopping trip and you didn't follow step one and shop after you'd already eaten now you're hungry and you don't want to eat this trash that you just bought so buying what you know you'll eat if you know that you're eating chicken four out of seven days a week just because you're tired of eating chicken grab the chicken you know you can get a meal at least you will like you may not love it but you'll like that chicken You'll like that lasagna. You'll like those burgers. You'll like those hot dogs. Whatever you know you'll like, 90%, 95% of what you buy should be the old reliables. Because with this, this list is about saving time and saving money. And that goes along with if you buy something that you're not sure if you'll like. You thought you'd like it. It sounded good when you looked at it. But if you bought it thinking you might like it and you didn't, and you don't end up eating it. You let it sit there until it goes stale and you have to throw it away. Or you just you mess over it anyway and you don't realize you, you know, you want to throw it away and you ate half of it. and It wasn't really that good. Every time you do that, think of the price of it. So I'll buy, uh, let's say I buy a new vegetable or a new set of uh, something that I saw in Costco or something. Costco is the worst. Let me talk about Costco for a second. Buying what you know you'll eat. Costco, Sam's Club, these wholesale places are not the place to buy experimental foods because you're buying it in bulk. So why are you buying a 12 pack? And again, I'm talking to myself, but if, if this hits home with you, right on. But if you buy a 12 pack of something thinking, oh, that sounds good. And then when you get through the first pack, and you realize you didn't like it. What are you doing with the other 11? That pack probably cost you somewhere around 12 to 15 dollars. I'm just making numbers up here to make sense of this. 15 dollars. OK, you ate one. So you just threw away 90 percent. More than 90 percent of the cash you put into it, so. just in the garbage like that. Every time you go buy something that you don't finish, that's money that went in the trash. It went stale, it expired, whatever, and it took up space in your cabinets. You ever open up your cabinets and, and you say there's nothing in here to eat, but you got a cabinet full of stuff? I am guilty. I am guilty of this all the time. Buying stuff that I know, I know I will eat is tough because it's monotonous. And like I said, I want to try new things, but I had to face reality with myself and know that we're going to eat chicken most of the time. We're going to eat burgers. We eat sloppy joe at the house. We keep it really simple here. Really simple because those simple things get eaten. We don't have any leftovers of those. Maybe for a day. But they get eaten. Nothing sits around. We empty that stuff out. But when I get the new experimental thing that I see in Costco, there's probably a 50-50 chance that it's going to go to waste in this house. So I can't guarantee it. So number two was buying what you know you will eat. Stick to it. Trust me, you'll see great results out of it. 
if you want to experiment, go eat one little thing at a restaurant, but that's not saving you money. Or buy a small amount at a regular grocery store and try it there. You'll thank me later. Number three, when you've done all this shopping, when you've bought what you'll eat, and then you decide you got home, you didn't feel like cooking that day, so you were going to order something out. No, 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 no. Prep the day before. If you know you're going to be hungry tomorrow, which I can pretty much say for certain, let me look into my mind as I predict the future. You're going to be hungry tomorrow. It's obvious. You eat every day. And if you don't, what are you doing? It's a basic survival need, people. You need to eat. You got to eat, as checkers and rallies used to say. Prepare the day before. It doesn't take much. You're not prepping for a party of 100 like I am at work. Okay? You're prepping for yourself. It takes minutes. Minutes. And when I say prepping, I don't mean you have to go in there, turn on every apparatus in order to get ready. You got to have a bunch of dishes to clean. You got to pull all this meat and stuff out. No. If you know y'all having chicken and pasta tomorrow or whatever, boil the pasta today. It takes 10 minutes. Cool the pasta, oil it, put it in the refrigerator. Okay. If you know you're having chicken and it's in the freezer, don't wait until tomorrow to pull the chicken out. On another note, if you don't know what you're having tomorrow, think about it. Take five minutes and that five minutes come to a decision. This is what we're eating tomorrow. I'm going to pull it out today. Because if you're like me, you like having the thrill of waiting until you're about to starve until you decide, hey, I'm, I need to figure out what I want to eat. And it's going to be super satisfying because now I'm really hungry. And then I decided what I wanted. And then I went and had it. So you can have it a full, you know, one step process of, you know, from being hungry to deciding what you want to going to get it. I get it. It was one fluid process. The only problem is it took you too long. You got frustrated because you were hungry. If you have spouses or kids or anything, you might have had a, a little heated debate about what you wanted to eat because the other person didn't want what you wanted, and now you're hungry, so y'all just settle on something you were going to eat anyway. Again, step two was buying what you know you'll eat. So if everybody will eat it in the house, then you don't have this problem. You just pick something, you prep it the day before. Pull that frozen chicken out the day before. Okay, Have it thawed out and ready. Have it seasoned and ready. Have those noodles done. Have that rice pre-portioned. Again, this stuff takes five minutes. Five minutes and you're knocking out 80% of what you need to do the next day. That way all you got to do is take the chicken or whatever protein or whatever item and cook it. You grill it. You saute it. You put it in the oven. Have somebody do steps ahead for you. Not just prepping the day before, but when you know you're going to cook if you know a range of time you're going to be ready to eat, have somebody turn the oven on. Normally that takes 10 to 15 minutes for that to heat up. That's more time you had to wait. But in that sense of counteracting towards those who would just rather go buy something from a restaurant or sit down and eat at a restaurant, let's weigh the cost and the time. Budgeting your cost and time are major steps when it comes to cooking at home. People say you will save money by cooking at home, but they don't tell you how. So I'm here to tell you how. That's what this list is for. If you go buy a bunch of expensive ingredients, expensive foods, and you waste them, you didn't save the money. So buying the right ingredients, and I've talked about this on an episode a while ago called Food Cost. So if you haven't heard that episode yet, scroll back. I think it's uh, in the teens somewhere. So check out in the teens episode 14, 15. I, I'm not sure. It's called food cost. But where to find cheaper ingredients and how to source local ingredients to help you, you know, cut down on cost when it comes to that. But the time it takes you to go get food or order at a restaurant uh, or go to a drive through by the time you've left your house, I don't know how far everybody lives from their local restaurants and such, but or gets it delivered. But chances are you had to wait mm, somewhere 30 minutes at least and up to an hour, hour and a half 
depending on what you were doing. By the time you decided what you wanted, left the house, or the person delivering had to leave there and go get it, or you went to a restaurant, sat down and ordered it, and by the time the food got to you, then you had to pay for the food, then you had to tip the server, or if you were there, or you had to drive home. Okay? The time that it took you for that was maybe 45 minutes on average. Just just give me the benefit of the doubt there. It's about 45 minutes. That's what I've seen in my life. And I live pretty close to restaurants. And that's about what it takes. 45 minutes to an hour between deciding, that being your starting point, and actually getting the food. 45 minutes. But if you decide to cook a meal and that's your starting point, even if you haven't done any prep, my tip five will help you to realize how much time you could save and how much energy you could save. But prepping the day before, which is the step that we're on, and make sure I stick to that point there, prepping the day before will cut down on your time every day because you already had a plan. And I know we're a world of procrastinators. I know I am. I will sit until I'm dead starved before I decide, okay, I guess I need to get up and go get something or go cook at this point. I get it. We wait. But don't wait too long when you could have had it done. Tip four. Having a backup plan. Having a backup plan. So like I said, going to shop while you're hungry will instantly throw off your day. Because by the time you get home, you don't want to cook what you just bought. So you're going to need to go get food. And we're trying to avoid spending money on outside food when you could have prepped the day before, like in step three, and buying what you know you'll eat in step two. So in step four, it's having a backup plan. If all else fails and you haven't prepped and you haven't bought what you know you'll eat and you, you went shopping while you were hungry, having a backup plan that's quick and easy Quick and easy to accomplish at your house. So having leftovers that you froze in preparation for these kind of days that you could just microwave. Buying a a large dinner that could be microwaved or pre-made or just popped in the oven really fast. You want something that's a fast option that avoids you going to restaurants. Full disclosure, me and my wife had a month where we ate a lot outside the house. So a lot of outside restaurants. And I think we took a vacation in there somewhere. We ended up spending like 800 to a thousand dollars in outside food. After we looked at our budget, cause we, we started doing budget meetings. So after we started checking the budget, we realized how much money we were spending on restaurants because eating at those restaurants was not just buying the food. It was tipping the service It was the gas to and from. It was the time to get all of this accomplished. And at the end of the day, the benefit didn't outweigh the money that we spent on it. So having a backup plan could have eliminated at least 25% of that, at least. So now that we are more mindful of it, we have backup plans in place. We only buy what we know we're going to eat simply because we've seen it happen too many times where I try to experiment and she doesn't want to eat it. I'm not eating that. And therefore we have to go pitch it and it just goes to waste. And then I I just wash money in the trash can because I couldn't figure out a way to get it eaten. I just, I, you know, I try, I try, I try. So having a backup plan, uh, especially if you cook in bulk, You know, you have a big family or it's just two of you. You cook four meals instead of enough for two people. You freeze the other two for a rainy day just in case you have one of those hungry moments. Boom, you got a backup meal. Having a backup plan, number four. Number five is for the current time and day that we are in. All right, so having a grocery delivery service. So one of our close friends that lives down the street from us, they use grocery delivery service because they have a lot going on. They got businesses and jobs and stuff, but they still take the time to buy their groceries and cook for themselves some of the time. And by doing that, they just have the people deliver it to them 
and they don't have to worry about taking the trip to the grocery store. They do it like any digital age person would. They buy it online and have it delivered. And going along with that, if you have a meal prep service that just sends meals that you just need to pop into the oven, there are a few different ones, Home Chef and some others. Personally, at our house, we use one called HelloFresh. And HelloFresh doesn't send the meal prepared for you. They send pre-portioned ingredients with recipe cards, and you can pick the meals ahead of time. So we pick them the week before, and it sends enough meals for each of us for four days or four meals. So four meals for me and my wife. And it comes out to about $8 a meal. $8 a meal. Good meals, too. They give you about 20-something options a week. And you can pick anywhere from three to, I think, five meals a week, maybe six uh, for a family of four, two or four, I think, is the units that you can pick. But me and my wife, it works well for us because we both work and we don't want to have to go buy food. So we have basically done all of the steps in this process. We didn't shop while we were hungry, so we picked them the week before. Okay, we bought what we knew we'll eat. We went through and we picked meals that we know we will like because they've been tried. They've been tested. Maybe we pick one experimental meal, but most of the ones are all reliables. Number three, we prepped the day before. By buying the HelloFresh meals, they've already done a lot of the prep for us. They pre-measured the stuff out. Sometimes all I have to do is peel a vegetable and maybe cut it or something. But most of the process is just cooking it. It's just cooking it. And they give you the ingredients. They give you the recipes. You just follow the steps. And like I said before, the time that you spend going to get food is roughly about 45 minutes. All of these HelloFresh meals top out around 40 minutes to prepare. Most of them are in the 30-minute range to get done. So if you wake up before you have to get dressed, get in your car, drive to wherever you're going to eat, you can just stay in your pajamas, okay, all day if you want to. And when you decide you're ready to eat, you go in there, take 30 minutes, throw on a few good songs, cook your meal, you're done. You're done. Hot meal ready. And if you decide that you want to use HelloFresh, who is not a sponsor of this video, by the way, although I'm talking about them as if they are, we've been using them for a while. Go to yourfoodlooksfunny.com. On the home page, there is a big banner on the right side of the screen that says $70 off HelloFresh. Again, on yourfoodlooksfunny.com. On the home page, click the button, get $70 off HelloFresh. If you have never used it before, try it out. All right. But those are my five tips on how to save time, save money by cooking and preparing your food at home. If you have any feedback to that, please call or text the show 419-777-4259 or 419-77-PICKY. Thank you guys for listening. We got some more strongly flavored foods to talk about. I actually do have a sponsor for the coffee episode, so look forward to that one in the next two weeks, and I will see you guys next week. Make sure you're following us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to Your Food Looks Funny. And call or text or reach out to the show and let us know what you think at 419-77-PICKY or 419-777-4259.